This is one of the most revolutionary bike products I've seen in a long time. It's an e-bike motor and a gearbox, all in one single unit. It ditches the traditional chain, cassette and derailleur and integrates everything into a single electronic drive unit. It's by a brand called Pinion and they call this the MGU, Motor Gearbox Unit. The rear end of the bike is completely transformed in both look and weight. There's a ton of potential benefit to this new tech, so I caught up with Max from Pinion to get deep into the details of this amazing looking new system. This bike, as you can't tell, has 12 gears. You can't tell because there's actually no derailleur, no cassette, and that's because the Pinion MGU unites motor and gearbox in one single unit. But moreover than that, electronic shifting is also included, as well as all the control technology, and it's all down here in this unit, which is round about the same size as um, any other uh, traditional mid-motor engine on the market right now. The total weight of the system, I know that that's the question that comes up first, is uh, in this version is 4.1 kilograms, which is about a kilo heavier than most other systems at the moment. But what you can't ignore is that it's actually saving up to 800 grams of weight at the back wheel because everything's moved over here. So in actuality, it's maybe three to 400 grams heavier than a traditional setup. But the benefits you get from that are incredible. So the, the weight reduction is actually at the back wheel, which is about a third of the weight of uh, a normal back wheel in that setup with the derailleur and the cassette, which is completely eliminated and moved into a better position. So you actually have, you save in about a third of the unsprung mass of the back wheel, which leads to better suspension performance, uh, regardless of the suspension. So if it's top of the line or bottom of the line, whatever you choose, the suspension reacts a lot better, a lot more sensitive to everything. So as a result, you've got more traction at the back wheel, which is, as we all know, for an e-mountain bike, pretty much the most important thing there is. I mean, for me, it's, it's solving quite a few things. There's there's the, the unsprung mass, the complexity of an old school chain and derailleur. That system has been out for many, many years. I don't know how many years, 100 maybe? <laughs> yeah, years. just about. They are prone to getting knocked and bashed around as well because on an e-mountain bike, you know, they're slung pretty low. So you've got way more clearance here. So there's that entire aspect of it. But then there's the whole integration in here and this this is one unit, so I'm assuming this is all electronically controlled. It takes all of its power from the main battery. It's electronic shifting. Tell me a bit about the, the gearing and, and how it works and what's the kind of range. This has got 12 gears, right? So we've got our gear range of 600% with the 12 speed version. Um, there's also a nine uh, gear version uh, of the Pinion MGU and the Pinion E-Drive system. But the genius thing about this is not only do you not knock anything off anymore, there's nothing that can be damaged here, but everything's in there and it's pretty much impossible to get whacked out of line or do anything to it. I mean, you'd have to really destroy the entire bike um, to whack anything out of line and that's permanently. So you're not having to fiddle around with like settings or tension screws or nothing. calibrating anything. It's, it's just good to go, right? It, it's just in there and it works. And 600%, so a typical 10 to 52 now is that's 520%. So we're already, so the gearing range is bigger than what's out on the market already by a margin. Yeah, not just that, but the gears are actually spaced perfectly. So it's always a 17.5% jump on the 12 speed version. Okay, everything you're saying is making me want to try this even more and <laughs> just sounds even more appealing. So we've got electronic shifting. Um, you can shift without pedaling as well? Yes. So a good thing about the trigger is that ergonomically it feels like a tri traditional trigger. So there's no adjusting on how you shift or anything. It's more of an internal adjustment to the fact that you can shift in situations where you would never shift before. Yeah, it feels more like a, like you say, there's movement in it. There's like a positive press, not just like a, a switch or a button. It, it actually has movement in yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. 
it feels like you're actually actuating something. Yeah. So normally, um, or in the past with gearboxes, you always had to kind of step back from the power a little bit to allow the gear change to happen. Um, it's just the, the way that it, the, the gears internally uh, grip into each other. But with uh, thanks to the electronics and everything that was developed by Pinion as well, so the entire system um, was developed towards each other to work together. And it's not just individual components somehow slapped together to work, but it's one cohesive unit. So even if you're in a situation um, where you want to shift and the MGU is kind of like, oh, it's maybe a little bit tough right now, um, maybe not the cleanest gear change, it actually knows where the crank arms are. So if, you have a, if you're pedaling along with a cadence of 60, that means 120 times a minute, you're at a point, at the dead point, at the top and bottom of the stroke, where there is barely any load on the pedal and it'll shift then. Got it. So, so, it, so it knows the optimum time to shift. It knows the optimum time to shift, which means it can shift in any situation. It can shift multiple gears at once and it doesn't require the pedals to rotate either to shift. So when I shift, got six, go back to, you go to seven, eight. And I can hear a slight noise of that gearbox actually Yes. Changing gear, right? Especially between eight and nine, the noise is a little bit louder because it shifts two sets of cogs at once. But um, other than that, while you're riding along, it's more quiet than, uh, than the hub if you've got a, a bike with an average sounding hub. Yeah. So you don't really hear anything from that. Plus, because of the fact that you don't actually have a derailleur or a chain or anything, you don't have any chain slap on this. So going downhill, it is as silent as a bike can be. Like I've never been on a bike as silent as one uh, as the ones um, we're releasing now with the Pinion MGU in them. Is there any motor backlash that you can notice? Um, some some motors are on on chunky stuff. They can get a bit of rattle from the motor. No, there's no rattling at all. Like the it's completely silent. You don't hear it. Everything's packed so tightly and so exact that as an afterthought, it just ended up the way that we didn't even have to think about it. It's just from straight day one, no rattling, no sound like that. Sweet. And what about under load? What's the volume like under, under full power, for example? Um, under full power, the noise emitted from the motor actually changes with the gear range. And that's because the faster motor runs, the more efficient it is with electric motors. But the faster motor runs, the louder it is. So the way that we've designed it and set it up is that for the really powerful climbing gears, which is one to four, the motor is a little bit louder. Um, but then when you go up to gears nine upwards, you can't hear it anymore pretty much. Wow. Like it's almost completely silent. So it changes throughout the gear range, the noise a little bit, which takes a little bit of a mental adjustment, but it's right in line with uh, anything else that is on the market um, at the moment and anything that will hit the market in the full power brackets in the years to come, just simply because of the reality that you have something spinning very, very fast in there. Okay, so you can come to the top of a hill, be freewheeling slightly or reach the bottom of a hill, freewheeling, shift gears, it will change yep. at the right time. So you're in the perfect gear. And I noticed there's a display here that shows you the gear that you're yes, in as well. Yes, exactly. Okay. So um, FIT was a system integration partner um, for this. Uh, they supply the batteries and uh, stuff like the displays. And they've integrated uh, the, the shifting system into their ecosystem as well. So you always know what gear you're in is displayed up there. But the thing is, like, even if we're standing here right now and I press on the shifter, it shifts. Wow. It's, it's done, it, it's in the gear. You don't need to do anything. If you come to a standstill, you can go from the hardest gear to the softest gear just like that, and you set off, you're in the softest gear. It, it just shifts. Okay. But then, even more than that, what the electronic shifting and all the sensors have allowed is that now the bike actually always knows what gear it's in, what rider, uh, what cadence the rider's pedaling, how much torque is in there, how much support, what the motor speed's like. So it can shift for you. So there's two functions um, currently available that you can choose to use or not which is, uh, which we are calling smart shift. One of them uh, is uh, pre-select, which means uh, you, uh, yeah, you pre-select your cadence or where you like to typically pedal, you select a the range. Then when you're coasting downhill, the MGU will constantly shift 
to adjust to your speed, which means that as soon as you face another hill or you crank back into the pedals, it'll already be in the right gear for you to do so. You don't even have to do anything for it. And then imagine this was a commuter bike. The second function, start select, means you pre-select a starting gear. And as soon as you stop, it'll automatically shift into there. So you reach a red light, there's no more awkward getting, trying to get go, no more embarrassment. No more lifting the back wheel up, spinning the pedals. Exactly. <laughs> It'll just automatically, you stop and it automatically shifts yeah. into whatever you want. I can think of so many scenarios where this would suit me. Even when I'm out in the woods filming, sometimes I'll do a piece down a hill. I'll be in the wrong gear, have to turn the bike round, pick up the back wheel, shift. And it's yeah. all these little things that you don't think of that this solves. What about... Um, power a lot of people are interested in in motor power newton meters watts can you talk to that a little bit okay the simple statement is it's got a comparable drive torque of 85 newton meters so it's right in the range with what's on the market currently but obviously anything that you get out of the crankshaft has already run through the gears so you have to measure it a little bit differently. So there's no loss, basically, because with a traditional drivetrain... There, there is always a little bit of loss here okay. and there. But the way you have to think about it is that you can't say it's 85 newton meters because depending on what gear it is, you have a different range yeah. that you're getting. So actually in gears one to four, you get 140 newton meters of torque at the back wheel. No, sorry, 160 even. So it changes depending on that. But most people just don't record it yet which we're pretty confident that it'll change because it just makes sense and some magazines and some test institutes already record the wheel torque instead of the output torque but yeah it is right in line with any other full power e-bike system on the market right now but the power delivery is uh, quite a little bit better just because of the way that uh, the system works wow it's a pretty cool piece of tech and I've seen it on a few demo bikes at the moment. This is a, a Balls and it's running it with a, a belt drive servicing. You don't lube this, so there's no nope. more lubing before you're going out for a ride or wet weather or dry weather. No, How not at all. Does, this need? does it need servicing? Um, it does require one little bit of service. Okay. And that's one oil change, which takes about 10 minutes every 10,000 kilometers. Sorry, one one 10 minute oil change in 10,000 kilometers. Yes, or after a year um, as a precaution. But in total, this system is actually wear free. So the gearbox, as well as the electronic motor, which is in there, which was originally designed for an industrial application that far exceeds any strain and wear um, that an e-bike sees, um, both of them are wear free. So you've got a system that is virtually, we call it virtually maintenance free because yes, an oil change is a good idea because you just want to have everything run smoothly. But other than that, there's nothing you have to do. It's just completely worry free. It's carefree riding. I mean, the only maintenance you've left to do on this entire bicycle is change, uh, change the braking pads and maybe the hyd hydraulic fluid, get the air out of there. And that's pretty much it. You've got, almost no parts with wear left on the bicycle or with excessive wear left on the bicycle anymore, which is especially amazing for an e-bike because the amount of wear and tear that that additional force of the motor um, together with your own legs put on the chain is just massive. And you don't really like the traditional derailleur chain setup was never designed for an e-bike. And it's already, a, it's a great system, but it's not, like there's better, there's just some flaws in there that have been hard to eradicate. And with this system, it eliminates all of them and you're just left with a bike that you set up and that's it, hmm. it just works. And it will continue working for longer than you probably have the bike. We're gonna have to get used to e-mountain bikes actually looking cleaner than normal mountain bikes for a little while. We're losing up to 800 grams at the back wheel and moving them here. So you end up with a difference of about half a kilogram. Yeah. That this system is heavier than a traditional um, mid-motor and uh, derailleur and chain setup. But the but weight the is in that, the right place, isn't yes, it? Yes, because you put the weight as low down as possible, it actually feels a lot lighter when riding, um, simply because the back wheel has less weight and therefore works better. And that makes the entire bike feel way lighter than its actual weight. 
which is very neat and just leads completely uh, together with the fact that you have no chain slap um, and uh, no noise, no rattling uh, from that side of the bike. It creates a completely new sound when you're out on the trail, especially in chunky tech, because like the normal sound that you always have in your brain when you're riding chunky tech is always just tick, 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 and that's gone. It's just tires and you can even hear the suspension more like when it's breaking the seal. I can just hear the fork. Yep. Over anything just else. Just hear the, the squish of the fork. <laughs> 